Columbia. Um, I am excited because I am having the opportunity to. Uh, I'm having the opportunity to have a lot of great discussions with phenomenal women who um, have conquered adversity, who have had tremendous success in their professional careers, um, who can speak in depth and at length about very interesting topics. So I'm pretty grateful because I've done 10 videos to this point so far, excuse me, and this is my 11th. Um, and I'm really excited today to have a chance to talk with Miss Tammy Ritchie. She is an international speaker, mentor, and trainer, and she has a tremendous story that I will not even attempt to get into until she is here. And she just hopped on, so let me go ahead and invite. Yes. Let me see. Because this thing... Here we go. Boom. Um, She's actually calling in from Australia, so they are past the halfway point of their week um, for us, you know, in the, the, the eastern side of the planet. Um, this is... Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. So, um, I want to thank you and introduce you as an awesome international trainer, speaker, and mentor. I was just telling my audience that you have a tremendous story to get into and how, um, you know, you were working in the corporate field and some changes, so, some some tr tremendous events occurred and yes. unleashed you into a whole new path. Um, so if you can tell the people, because I, I, I won't even try to segue neatly into it. I'm going to just let you go ahead. It's, um, I'd like you to talk about you know, what, what the experience was, uh, how it changed you and, and how we, how we got here today, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Firstly, thank you so much for having such a powerful, um, segment that you've got here, um, to help entrepreneurs get their message out there to the world. It's absolutely, absolutely. fabulous. And thank you. So awesome to have me. Uh oh, it's going in and out. It was. It was better when you didn't have the headphones. Like, no sound. Can't hear you. I we heard. I heard you before, but then I think when you plugged in the headphones, it, it messed up the sound. Cause now I can't hear you. Hello? We'll get it together. I heard you originally, now it's nothing. Can't hear anything now. Did you mute the, did you mute it? Maybe do I come off and come back on? Yeah, try that. Cause it, I can't hear anything now. It was working. I was not. A little technical difficulties, folks. Please be patient. <laughs> it happens. Let's try this again. Hey, I'm back on. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Oh, good, good. I'm not sure. Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, All right. sometimes the headphones don't work. Sometimes the headphones work, don't work. That, ha that happened to me about three lives ago. Where, um, All right. I'll, I'll take the headphones. Yeah. yeah. The headphones. 
and it don't work. All right. Can you hear me now? Yep. Perfect. Yep. All right. Okay. So we'll start from the beginning then. So um, I believe that you do such an amazing job empowering people to live their best lives. Um, I'm absolutely a part of that as well. And so sometimes um, how do we actually know what our why is or how do we actually tune in and tap into that why and discover what our purpose is? Because we all have a purpose, right? And absolutely. sometimes, you know, things can happen and you can actually bypass right past it and not even discover what your purpose is. So fortunately or unfortunately, I was awakened to what my purpose was through a massive tragedy. So I was an engineer for 17 years in the Royal Australian Air Force, of which I absolutely loved and had, did some amazing things with some amazing people. And, you know, just the guys, um, I'm still part of their family. I'm like their little sister. So um, during that time, 17 years, I'd reached the top and I was questioning, everything inside of me was questioning when I was on maternity leave, could I go back to this? I knew that that was my third child. I wasn't going to have any more children and this was going to be me, my career, until the day I retired. Um, my husband and I had lots of investments anyway, but ultimately that was going to be my career path. And everything inside of me said, no, 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 there's more, there's more, you know, and I felt really unfulfilled and was questioning it and knew that my kids had to be the first ones in the childcare centre when we started, the last ones out and all of the chaos that went along with it and I was questioning why. So we'd had our third child. I was enjoying the time on maternity leave. And the thing that I enjoyed the most was the space, allowing myself every single day to do my rituals and to do some meditation, which I never had the time to do when I was an engineer. So when I was an engineer, I worked full time. I was also studying at university, doing my teaching degree and raising two beautiful girls at that time. Because, so time was one of those things that was very precious. So I didn't have the time to work on myself, which was the missing piece. So during the time when I was on maternity leave and I made the focus all about me, getting my body back, getting back into the fitness regime and doing my rituals every single day. That allowed me then to see, hear and feel what I needed to feel at the most important time. You see, we were so excited because we'd moved down to the Gold Coast and we were very excited to be moving into our first home. I was home alone with my little boy at that time. He was just 16 months of age and I put him down right within my sight while I made headway with the boxes. What had happened from that moment is I got this feeling that was so powerful that just I just couldn't dismiss. Part of me was trying to dismiss it because what I saw, I didn't want to believe because it was all in my head. But what caused me to do is it caused me to look up and have a look and realise he'd gone missing. He's 16 months of age, playing with these toys while I'm busy unpacking boxes and he'd gone missing. Now, that's pretty natural for mum to see that. Okay? And my head was... Sorry? You said yeah, 16 months? He was 16 months of age and my head was trying to dismiss it to say, you know what, everything's totally fine, everything's okay, just continue doing what you're doing. That was my head. So my former self before doing the tools every single day would have possibly listened to the head. However, the heart was pushing me. The intuition was pushing me so much to say, you cannot just dismiss this and think he's playing in another room with, your to with his toys. You need to go looking for him right now. So I did. I went looking room after room, box after box, trying to find him. And I couldn't find him anywhere. And the vision that I had, that I was given, that I didn't want to believe, that I was trying to, to dismiss, was my last choice. I had no choice but to take those steps to my swimming pool. And every parent's worst nightmare suddenly became my reality. As my own little flesh and blood little guy that I'm meant to nurture, protect, nourish. The, one, the only little guy that's with me during that time was suddenly floating and unconscious, fully clothed, shoes on, nappy on, absolutely everything on my watch. I mean, how could that be? Just 
took my breath away. So I immediately screamed for help, for someone to come and help me. But no one came because no one was home. There weren't any neighbours home either. So I raced into the pool, pulled my little boy's lifeless body in my arm and raced inside and tried to call emergency on my home phone, which wasn't connected. Absolutely everything that was meant to help me failed me in that moment. But fortunately, again, I was given the gift to actually discover him. And fortunately, yes, I was trained in CPR at that time. But every time I did my CPR classes, I always felt it was for the tick in the box. I never, ever felt that I'd ever need to use it. So when this is the only thing that I've got to help me save my little boy's life, I felt so let down, not at anyone else, but myself for not seeing the importance and not paying the attention and not thinking that anything could happen. With that moment, I'm freaking out thinking, oh my goodness, I can't even remember the rotations because back then it was 12 years ago and back then um, it was so different between chi um, infants, children and adults with regards to the rotations. So I was left confused. And what I decided to do then is the thing that actually helped me so much and has been pinnacle to everything I do in my life from now, from that moment forward. I closed my eyes for a second and I breathed deeply. That caused me to then hear what I needed to hear. And the voice that I heard was, get over yourself. This is not about you. If you don't do something, anything, it doesn't matter. If you don't do something right now, your little boy is never going to be with you ever again. So with that, I followed those instructions. I lay him down, commenced CPR in the first rotation, nothing happened. In the second rotation, he started breathing and I just could not believe it. Oh my goodness, how blessed am I? I've got a second wind. I've got a story. So I immediately then found my mobile phone called emergency services. By the time they arrived, they always expect the worst. They couldn't believe that my little boy was actually crying and they stood there and cried with me. So yes, we had some time in hospital, but they knew that my story was so powerful and immediately immersed me into the media. I was meant to be going back to work as the engineer, as I mentioned, and now I had a big story, a big why, a big purpose. So how could I go back to being an engineer when I had this message to deliver to the world. Did I know what I was doing? Absolutely not. But what I did is I tuned into my heart and I followed every single step. Because the thing is, what we forget is the answers are already there. We just forget. We get caught up in the busyness of life. And if I would have been caught up in the busyness of life, my little boy would no, be, no longer be with me. I chose to focus on the outcome that I wanted to achieve. I chose to focus on being on stage in, stages internationally, on being in the media everywhere, on getting my story out there, on creating training so others can also protect their loved ones. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never run business, but I've suddenly become successful in this field and highly sought after in the training and have won a lot of international and national business awards. And that is simply because I'm not a hero. I'm not anything special. I'm not unique. I'm a mum, just like many of your viewers are, um, or just a person. And I was fortunate that I found my gift, my truth, my purpose. I've immersed in personal development with some of the world's best leaders, from Tiha Becker, who's absolutely brilliant. I traveled the world with Tiha Becker and have loads and loads of friends from all around the world because of that. I was involved in that program for many years. So, aha, all the um, warriors out there that are watching right now. Um, also blessed to have Lisa Nichols as my speaker trainer um, and coach and mentor. She's one of the world's most highly sought after speaker, women speakers in the world. So um, I'm so blessed to have actually just attracted. So it's been in my energy field that these people have come into my lives and I've been able to be mentored by them because how, what's the quickest way for you to achieve success is to mimic those that have already done it, yeah? So Tony Robbins is also, um, I'm 
Tony Robbins leader as well. So I've been immersed with Tony Robbins as well. I absolutely love his training. And each one of those, um, including David T.S. Wood, each one of those have been completely different trainers, but I've picked a little bit of nuggets from. And what they've really done is actually, I haven't learned so much from them, but apart from learning how to build a business, but what I have learned is it's uncovered what I was already doing and it's giving me the confidence to know that I'm on the right path and doing the right thing. So yeah, um, I've co-written a book called Ditch the Ladder, which is the skills, which is pretty well um, doing daily rituals. I would not go a day without doing my daily rituals and meditation and having the space and starting my day off with going to the gym. I've just smashed it out of the gym right now. Um, yeah, and those type of things is when you build your energy because we want to focus on building our energy vibration so that synchronicities just happen, just exactly like we're on the call right now. I mean, how did that even happen? How did that happen? You live on the other side of the world. I live in Australia, um, and all of a sudden, our energies have met. We're on the same energy vibration, and coincidences just happen. So it's really amazing, and I love teaching people this stuff. I have a lot of... Um, things, events and workshops that I run and retreats as well that I run to actually give people these gifts and these tools to be able to help them live their best lives as, as well. And I've teamed up with an amazing guy, Shane Reynolds. Um, we're about to launch into the corporate world as well. So I do do a lot of training um, for the first day training in the corporate sector, but we're also doing leadership as well. I've, um, internationally, I train in China um, with all around the world they come from the USA UK New Zealand Australia and Chinese and it just really shows me that language is universal we do not need to speak the English language to get a point across but there's many many ways of communication for them to learn and it's just fantastic to see them learning the skills that I'm passing on yeah so, so let me ask you the let me ask you a question when I mean because that is all tremendous and especially the fact that, first of all, that you're, uh, you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, you're, that your uh, son is still with you. That's tremendous that, you know, you had that awareness and that, 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 that aha moment, I don't want to call it an aha moment, that intuition to go, you know, search and find him successful. My question is, what exactly was the path? Like, so once that happened, Right, because I know there are people who are who have probably dealt with some, you know, tra tragedy and significant circumstances. What was it exactly that once that happened? How did you transition into? All right, let me go speak and inspire, and you know, take another career path because you know a lot of people would have experienced that, and as believed as they would have been, um, they may have been frozen and traumatized and not necessarily, um, you know taking that path that you chose. So um, what yeah. was it that, that inspired you to actually leave the Air Force as an engineer and, and decide to share, you know, and get out here and do what you do now? What was it? Well, you see, I know that nothing has meaning except the meaning you give it. So you're exactly right. Some person can have the exact same incident that I had and take a lot longer to overcome to take a lot longer to, to, um, to, to grieve, I suppose. I didn't give myself the time to grieve at that time because I had a mission. So my why was bigger than my why not. That to me, because I was already searching for an answer. I was already searching for what's my next step. By doing this, I had to, it allowed me to keep my husband away, <laughs> keep the wolves away, um, because otherwise I was going back to engineering to earn the income. So I needed to make it work. So when, you're, when you have a story and you have something, a powerful message to deliver and you are relying on it so much, a lot changes. But also a lot of the tools and strengths and resilience that I learned in my childhood because I didn't have the best childhood either. So um, I was adopted and my adopted mum for whatever whatever happened here, she didn't actually want me. So I suffered a lot of emotional and physical abuse. So I already had those strengths. So I'm not suggesting to go through a big tragedy to get those strengths. What I'm suggesting is to um, concentrate on seeing the energy where you want to go. 
because when we're actually in the chaos of a disaster or a tragedy or some or a health journey um, we can choose to focus on that health journey like since the drowning incident that was the key for me um, there's been a lot more tragedies that I've had to overcome um, God just thinks that well God knows I'm a very strong person and I'm going to overcome it so I've overcome a couple of autoimmune diseases myself Plus, I've got a daughter that has a couple of autoimmune diseases where we fight on a daily basis to keep her alive. Um, and, you know, another person that has those incidents that happen can actually look at it and go, oh, my God, this is happening to me, to me, to me, and fall apart and use that energy. But there's a point that you have to rise up above that and realise the gift in it and realise that, oh, my goodness, what if this was given to me because God knows that I can achieve it, because I can grow from it, I can learn the lessons from it, and it can help many people as a result. So the energy where you put something, I put the energy on the outcome that I want to achieve. So I encourage your viewers that if they're in a time where they're wanting to do change and they're a little bit scared of the unknown, let me tell you, when you jump outside that comfort zone, you enter the power zone. And once you're there and if you're so clear, crystal clear on where you want to go, the rest just happens. Synchronicities just happen. You meet the right people. Obviously, you've got to get out there. You can't be doing this just sitting at home. You need to get out there and get known and get your profile known. And then everything else just happens. So since the incident, yes, I've got um, a couple of training um, academies where, as I mentioned, I deliver um, the personal training, uh, personal development, mindset, leadership, as well as the first aid training. But since then, I've had to overcome a, a lot of stuff myself. And so I, what I've learned is you've got to be really conscious of what goes in, on and around your body as well, because a lot of those things are things that contributed to my ill health. So since then, um, I feel like I'm Dorothy on The Wizard of Oz and I'm on the yellow brick road and I'm bringing people along with me. I've had the best leaders. I'm aligning with people and people are following because what I'm actually looking at is there's a solution for problems. People are getting sick. Ill health is one of the you know things. And if you lose your health, life is so precious. Your health is such a precious commodity. And you know what? If you lose your health, um, what else matters? The thing that matters the most is your health. So uh, we've created a thing, I've um, manifested, everything I do as a manifestation, I've manifested an amazing business partner who puts all my ideas, my crazy ideas together. Um, he's a genius in that way. <laughs> so we've just released Organica.group, which is a platform, online affiliate platform to showcase people um, their products, their natural, organic and low toxic products to benefit everyone else. So. The reason why I created that is because there were so many people that I've mentored to help discover their why. They were living in a um, world where they were unfulfilled. And they've come to my workshop. I've done interventions on them. I've take them, taken them back. They've been crying babies on the floor. They've gone to the other side and then they've realized their gifts that, oh my goodness, they've created incredible products. Like my cleaner that cleans my house, she's created these products that have got um, essential oils in them. There's absolutely no toxicity in there. And your house smells beautiful and they're really affordable as well. So we needed a platform to put those things. Plus also I'm blessed to have manifested an incredible healing property on our home. Um, and it has incredible healing trees on it. They're called Gumby Gumby. They're indigenous and they help people with their health. So Without even saying anything, people would feel unwell and they'd be watching my journey and they'd contact me and they'd ask, can you help me? And this is without any advertising. So can you see what's happening through the energy vibration? People just come, right? And so they ask, can you help me? And I'm like, sure. So not only am I mentoring them, but then I've also got a physical thing that I can send to them in the form of leads. And they take that and a lot of them have regained their health. So that's just gotten momentum. I've gotten um, joined forces with some health food stores where we're now stocking them in shelves and we've got them on organic as well. So everything is exciting. If you continue to work on yourself and continue to do your rituals every single day, anything is possible. And you know, you just don't know who you're gonna meet, what opportunities come. And all I say is to be open to opportunities, to not close them down so you can grow. Let me ask you this. So how 
would you go about finding your why? How would you go about finding your why? Okay. So that's where it comes Not into... Not you necessarily, because I mean, I know you had a powerful, you had a traumatic situation. I'm talking about somebody who hasn't had necessarily that kind of uh, event occur. How would they go about finding their why to take action? Absolutely. That's a very good question. Because what happens in life is, as you mentioned, and you've alluded to, that sometimes people have limiting beliefs and patterns that slow them down. They have fears that are built up. They're not good enough. They can't do this. No one will listen to them, blah, blah, blah. Right? We all have these limiting beliefs. So what we do need to do is we need to face some of our um, demons that we've been through. Usually in childhood, they will usually come up. When did someone tell you you can't do something? When did someone tell you that you weren't good enough? When did you not get chosen to be in a team, in a sporting team? And how did that make you feel? Because those patterns become patterns that come in. And so when you're faced with an opportunity where you're thinking, should I jump? It slows you down. So to tune in and actually do rituals, um, do meditation. And um, there's a, I'll give you a couple of tools that I use every single day which have been really powerful because then when you actually build yourself up, you um, tend to less um, see negative aspects. You tend to live in a positive vibration. I so one of the that. things that, yeah, one of the things that um, I do every day, and it's very, very simple, instead of focusing on that incident where you were told you can't do something, what if you could take yourself and see, hear, and feel as though you're a helicopter looking over yourself when you were little and look at a time when you were really, really proud. And stand there and just suck it up and take in that energy and see who else was there and take all those feelings in. And you know, you can do that with every different emotion. You can do that with happiness as well. When's there been a time when you've been extremely happy and excited? And it doesn't even need to be excited when you were excited. Perhaps you're excited about doing something now. So perhaps that thing that some people are think contemplating on deciding on should I do this should I do this opportunity their head will try and talk them out of it so we're going to smash that away these tools are all about tuning into your heart because the heart is 16 times more powerful than the brain so these tools tools by doing these tools every day your clarity becomes even clearer so looking at something that's exciting um, looking at also something that has made you laugh belly laugh because then you're in that high energy state to start with you add those things to your um, to your meditation and also um, there's too many people in the world that are going to tell us that we can't do things or tell us that we're not good enough or um, too fat or you know whatever they are and if we believe those things they're going to follow us but if we believe the opposite and the way that we're going to do that is I am statements looking in the mirror it reflects back to us and what if you could just tell yourself every single day, I am beautiful, I am valuable, I am worthy, I am motivating, I am um, inspiring, um, you know, opportunities come to me effortlessly with grace and ease, those type of things. So those tools, by being in that energy vibration, will raise your energy vibration so that then things will come to you. You still need to actually go and work on those um, childhood you know, tra traumas that have kind of slowed you down. And that's probably pretty easy for a coach to take someone to the other side. It's literally just holding their hand and taking them to the other side. It's a bit tricky to do on your own, um, but if you can, you know, do that with someone else, holding your hand, and then you can continue to do your rituals and everything every day, the rest will be history. Because the thing is, the five-second rule, we stand on a cliff. We've got our pack on, we're ready to jump. If our brain tells us, if we count to five seconds and our brain's already checked out and gone, you know what, you can't do this, who do you think you are, you know, blah, 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 and you listen to that, you're probably never going to do that. And where does that continue to show up in your life? However, if you got to the five-second rule and you counted backwards and you jumped before you got to the end of the five seconds, more chances are that you're going to achieve stuff. So I'm not saying to you to go jump off a cliff, but... Think about something in your life that could actually, um, you know, give you a little bit of a scare that perhaps you could do and then maybe overcome. 
So go and put yourself in that position and then overcome. So if it might be, um, you know, walking down the mall and, and, and singing and dancing and, you know, because how does a movement get started? By someone. One person is a leader and they do it first. So there might be people that think, you know what, they're freaking nuts. But what's going to happen if you go to do that? And then you can see, oh, my goodness, that was so, so, so simple. What if I could then do something else and something else? And then you can build yourself up. And then you're building yourself up in that energy and the rest is history. We've also created another thing um, because another thing I've overcome, when I actually got sick, um, I discovered that I got bitten by a mosquito um, and the mosquitoes um, spread diseases and they kill. And I wasn't actually aware of that so much so um, until I got sick myself. And when I got sick myself, obviously, I had to use all the tools and stuff like that. And this is before I had the tragedy, okay? And I had to go, when the Australian government realised that I had this disease that was actually eating my liver um, that I'd gotten from New Guinea from a mosquito, they threw me into hospital and they, I was in isolation for around about a month to try to stop the spread of it from coming into our country. And that, I believe, has been, was the trigger to getting my two autoimmune diseases. So obviously having two autoimmune diseases is going to slow you down. But the focus that I put to that, instead of focusing on, oh, my God, you know, I've got these diseases, I'm feeling tired, I'm worn out, I've got these babies I need to look after, life is hard. Do you think that I'd ever have those feelings? Absolutely. But what I chose to do was focus on the outcome, on getting better. And then the rest, everything else came to me effortlessly with grace and ease. So the mosquitoes are a big problem and they do kill and they do spread diseases. So another thing that I'm passionate about um, that I'm also the online distributor for is an Australian product. There's an inventor here on the Gold Coast and he's done all this scientific um, work to actually um, create a mosquito trap where a mosquito can't even tell the difference between a human and a, and a trap. So the mosquito, the female mosquitoes get attracted to it, they drown, and then it frees up your area from 100 metres to 300 metres so you can entertain in peace and not have the threat of getting sick or just being uncomfortable. So that's all natural as well, and that's also listed on Organica as well. So I just wanted to mention that because we do distribute that to 72 countries. Um, so I'm really proud of, of that, of, um, you know, and none of these things would have been possible had I not have said yes. So I guess answer to your question is actually saying yes to you yeah <laughs> so let me ask you this before we wrap up i would like for you to give the audience a few basic tips and guidelines they can follow um that either help them say yes or take action um if they're feeling fearful or afraid or hesitant um you know because not everybody goes through tragedy that will spur them to take action um it's unfortunate that, you know, we have a lot of humans are in the action when something bad happens. But what if nothing bad happens and inspires them to take action? What would you tell those people? What tips would you have? Um, and what would you suggest to get going and get the juice flowing? Absolutely. Give yourself the beauty of space every single day. Um, fill your own cup up first. So too often we're too busy running around. I was the ultimate people pleaser going to make sure everyone else's needs was met before my own. But this tragedy, this incident has shown me that in order for me to be my best version and to continue to manifest and attract what I need to and the best people in, and resources into my life is I need to focus on me first. Look at things that happen for you, not to you as well and continue to breathe so you know um you know people with anxiety and stress and all that kind of thing they're deep breathing they're really breathing fast and stuff like that what if you could just wake up every day and breathe deeply and feel gratitude for where you are that's the most perfect way to start your day before you even get out of bed and that's exactly I what i do before i get out of bed and um, before my feet even hit the floor um, and then, as I said, then I go through and I do my rituals with the, the proud moments, the happy moments, the excited moments, the laughter, because that puts you in a high energy vibration state. Because in our bodies, um, even when I, I've actually broken my back and had two major surgeries and had to learn how to walk again. And during that time, it was so powerful to learn that, you know what, if you tell yourself you can't do things or you're sore, guess what? that's what you're going to get because the subconscious can't tell the difference between what you do and what you don't want. So it's about being conscious about what you're wanting 
and also being conscious of your language and where your um, what your physiology is and where you're sending your focus. Because what I learned during that time, and that was many years ago, is filling your cup up every single day, doing your rituals, putting the positive energy in, having your positive affirmations all around your house, no matter where you go, when you clean your teeth, look on your bathroom window, see positive affirmations everywhere. So that then you're filling your cup up with these positive affirmations and ensuring that you put the energy to you. So if it's the um, thing where you have to run around looking after everyone else, look after you first, then there isn't any resentment. And there, there's a feeling of, you know what, I feel amazing, I feel confident, I feel great. And you can actually then serve from a better place rather than from resentment. I hope that helps. I love it. Um, before we go, tell these people where they can find you online and on social media. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you can find me online, um, www.yucantoo.com.au. That's Y-U-C-A-N and then the number two, .com .au. Um So basically, if you go there, all of the links from my other website through organica.group is there, plus mosquitobites.me is also there. And online on Facebook, social media, Tammy Ritchie, or again, You Can Too. Because what, what You Can Too represents is I help people discover their why by deciding they can so they can live a life that they deserve. And with the first aid side of it is, you know what? I try to say to people that I'm not anything special. I'm not unique. This incident happened to me. So if I can save a life, guess what? You can too. With the tools and the tips. Yeah. So thank That's you so awesome. much for the... The interview today it was um, absolutely amazing to be here. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your, your your story and your message. I'm sure it was extremely valuable to my audience. Uh, real quick, shout out to Mary. Thank you for watching and whoever else is viewing and just didn't uh, you know tag or you know click a button or something. Thank you for the uh, thank you audience. I will um, add these information to the comments so. Um, if you all want more information, you'll definitely be able to find it in the comments and go check her out. Go see about the awesome products that she recommended and that she's behind and check out her story. Um, and like I said, international speaker, mentor, and um, teacher. Tammy Ritchie, thank you very much for coming on today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And I just want to show you, I'm here with, on the waterways. We've got the most beautiful weather. This is our winter here in Australia. I've just come back from the U.S of US of A and had a fabulous time there, but we're so blessed to be living in this beautiful country. So for your viewers that are out there that haven't been to Australia, come on down. Why haven't you been here? You'll absolutely love it. So thank you so thank much for an you. amazing day. <laughs> about the, and she's on the tourism the board apparently too. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to all the viewers for tuning in. Yeah, do like, share, comment. And if you have any questions whatsoever, if you have something that you've got in mind that you're not sure how to jump into the unknown or jump into the, um, to come up with the vision, what you need to do, just get in contact with us um, on the website. Akil will put my details down below. Thank you so much, Akil. Have an amazing day. And keep on empowering those people out there. You're doing an amazing Thank job. Thank you. Definitely will. I appreciate that. Vote of confidence, and I will definitely do that. I actually think I'll be in Australia next year sometime, so maybe I'll come check you out. Oh, you'll love to come to the Gold Coast. We live in the most perfect place here on the Gold Coast in Queensland. <laughs> yes, beautiful <Awesome>. beaches. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.